getting on my way Finally woke up with some luck in the book I don't give up what someone, someone say Finally got my friends in the back on my roller We gon' make it big one day We gon' make it big, I say We gon' make it big, just stay in the Stay in the moon Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Embrace the Power of Ages. We got Duncan Grubinski on today. We're gonna to talk about our book, The Light and Soul on a Fire on Fire, my bad. And but the one thing we want to talk about is most people in their lives will deal with turbulent times. It's how you deal with those turbulent times. And some of us use the prayer of serenity, is that you know I can only fix the things I can fix, and those that I can't fix, I just gotta let go. And it falls really in line with the light of your soul on fire, and it talks about being resilient. Becca, me and Mike, do you want to say, what's up, girl? How you doing? Welcome. <laughs> hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, and, and so what I want to do is touch off bases because we talked yesterday and you were talking about you were from Minnesota. So I need to know how you left the frozen Arctic of Minnesota and ended up here in Florida. Mm, I was 11 years old. My dad was a truck driver and I got to go on my first summer trip with him. And we went to Pensacola Beach and I saw the ocean for the first time and something shifted in me. And it was like, that's where I belong. So over the course of from 11 to age 37, I've had multiple opportunities to move down here. I had a sales job where my territory was down here. My ex-husband had a territory down here and I kept feeling the fear and not moving and not moving and not moving. And so I waited until it was the most inconvenient time, ex-husband in Minnesota, three kids in school, let's make it a little bit more exciting. And I called my ex-husband up and I said, can I please live in Florida? And he's like, I was just waiting for you to ask. <laughs> so we, we figured it out. We fly the kids back and forth. You know, we still have 50-50 uh, and we've just, you know, right, wave, wave your magic wand. How do you want this to go and then do it? If we look around the world and we say, well, if we, we don't see anybody doing this, maybe it's not possible. And all the people that told me, they were like, yeah, there's no way you can still balance this and still do that with kids. And I was like, watch me. Oh, yeah. but that, you know, you're right. I mean, it's all about life's challenges and, and stepping forward. So, you know, I, I read your book and I told you that. And, yeah. and actually, it's a good read. So everybody out there, let me just tell you, the light <laughs> of your soul on fire is a good read. I mean, because it honestly touches on life and i mean and you expose yourself let me be clear so if anybody mm -hmm. wants to think that this is going to be some some uh suburban night love story no she <laughs> she uh becca really exposed herself and says hey this is reality this is how life works and i really love it so what made what drove you to write the book Beck? Mm, well i didn't want to write it first off i there was something pulling on my heart that was like you need to tell your story because you have been through so much and the way that you not only took what you were going through, you were willing to see it differently, you were willing to heal it, you're willing to move it into um, a higher viewpoint and, and move through it in a way where everybody wins. So how many people like do we see in the world, right, that things happen and they get them down and they don't get back up? So first off, I needed to figure out how to get back off. Secondly, I wanted to tell the world like, hey, there's hope for you in divorce. There's hope for you in loss of a child. There's hope for you in you know, parent divorce. There's hope for you in your entire career shifting. There's there's hope for you know getting fired, right? There's there's hope for you in life. Yeah, you touched on that too. Yeah, it's all in there, like all of my dirt. I remember when I was submitting it, so I self-published it the very first time. I didn't even have, you guys, I didn't even have an editor read it because I was so afraid for somebody to hear my story. So I was just like, almost threw up, like had my bag ready to throw up and I had to submit <laughs> on the self-published and then I was like, oh my God, did I really do it? And then thankfully it was like 48 hours until it was live. And then I literally sat there for two weeks, like biting my fingernails off, waiting for people to read it. And at that point there was, you know, multiple errors and whatever. And I didn't even care. The goal was, is like, here's my human self. Here's my message. This is what I want you to know. And I want you to know that, that there's light at the end of the tunnel. 
Oh, you know, I like the point where you said about Arabs. And this is, I grew up in Europe, so I have always struggled between the German language and the English language, and my grammar's horrible. And so people used to always say, man, you got so far in life, and but your grammar is not. You know what I told them? I said, that's authentic me. I said, mm-hmm. so at one point I used to look at it as like this negative thing that would cause me to kind of go into a shell. Then at one point I decided I don't care anymore. I'm literally going to be okay with who I am and where I'm going. And that's what resonated with me with your book. But also what resonated me with your book was when you talk about parents and you talk about the time your dad missed your graduation and the impact Mm. it had on you. I don't know. You know, I realize that a lot of people is profound. That resonates with more people than you know. And so I want to kind of touch on not just the fact that you talked about your dad missing that event, but, you know, I'm sure people that have read the book have said something to you because um, that relationship, when those events like that happen, really have long term effects on people. And so how did you know, I realized realize you just let the audience know how you dealt with your dad missing your graduation and then how it made you evolve as who, who you are today. Your soul has a message for you. So get your copy today. Light your soul on fire. Written by Becca Grabinski. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah. So my dad's been my biggest teacher. Thank you, dad. <laughs> and we all have that one person, right? That's just like, you know, grows us, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> grows us. <laughs> and so he said, like, I want you to go to St. Cloud State. I want you to live at home. I want you to like, let this be easy. And of course, I don't listen to what people tell me. I did it my way. So I went to a tech school. I went to a school in Wisconsin. I ended up failing out of school. Lo and behold, coming back to St. Cloud State and graduating with a finance degree. So ended up doing what he said. I just like had to play outside of the lines first. I'm, I don't regret it. And it was so important. <laughs> well, we all have to color outside the lines. <laughs> right? Like, no, like I'm not playing. I, tell me what to do and I'm going to do everything else. And then I'll come back and be like, yeah, your way was right. But I had to like navigate all the other avenues first. And so... I told him for a year, the date of my graduation. And so he's a truck driver and he hauls like the really heavy, um, oversized, overweight all across the U S the big loads, stuff. Right? So, yeah. So obviously when he's gone, he's gone for six weeks. Right. So it's a different, so I can't necessarily navigate that, but so he, yeah, he did. He wasn't there. And I had told him over and over and over again, like, you're the one that pointed me to this direction you're the one that should be here for this, right? And he wasn't, and and that was really, really difficult. And so March 6th of 2022 of this year was the first time he ever said he was proud of me. And the cool thing was, yeah, the cool thing was, you guys, I didn't need it. I didn't need him to say he was proud of me. It was like, I've been waiting all my life for my dad to see me and to notice me and to, to like accept and love me. And what I realized is that I had to accept and love myself, that I had to quit doing things for dad's approval and I had to do something for me. So self-validation is what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Is that at some point when you start self-validating yourself, it's really funny how you no longer have to, you know, like need that approval. Because I kind of had a similar situation with my dad. And then one day I realized something. You weren't there when I needed you. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going to be okay without you. But my self-validation was I put my energy into my kids so they kind of offset when I had my daughters that offset at my approach. So now that you've been through that, now you look at your kids, how do you, how do you approach it? Well, that's a great question. I've told them that there's no definition of what a mom or a dad is. And if we take the definition that society gives us and we put them in this box, they're never going to meet our expectations and we suffer. So instead we look at, okay, here's my dad. A couple of weeks ago, I was just in Minnesota and I called him up and I'm like, Hey dad, I haven't seen you for forever. Like, Are you going to be home? And he's like, well, I could be home, but I'm not going to be because I've, you know, lots of people are taking off for the fourth. And I said, dad, call your work and tell them your daughter is home from Florida. She is very important. And I want to see her. You know what he says to me? The only, the only thing important to me right now is making money. So, so he's driven by just the the greenback is what you're telling me. Yes. So like, it was funny because I called my mom. It didn't hurt. It didn't bother me at all. Right. Because I've healed all this, but I was like, hmm. Hasn't changed. If you look like a duck and it's like a duck, it's a duck, right? So this is my dad. My dad is the man that he has been raised to believe that a good man 
creates an income stream and he never stops, right? He's 67 years old. That's, that's the he will old never school. Stop. That's old school, man. Mm -hmm. And so honoring him, right? Whereas my mom has never missed anything in my life. My dad has never made anything in my life. I'm not going to say it. He's made some, but <laughs> little different, right? That's and so when I balance. tell the kids, yeah. So when I tell the kids, I say, okay, you know, here's your options. You can look at us for face value and you can love the person that is. And when you can love your mom for who she is and when you can love your dad for who she is, that tells me something that you are loving yourself for who you are. No, no, I, you know, that's a great point because it took for, for years for me to, to get through my little issues. And it goes back to like mental health. And I, and I wanted to touch on that because when I read your book, I was like, wow, you could have, you could have went off the rails because <laughs> the <laughs> normal yeah. Americans, yeah. Um, if you read, if they read your book, normal, a lot of people would literally have quit, given up and the amount of things that happened with it. And Mike, had, I had different statistics that I was going to run through the show of just showing that mental toughness and most people are affected by their parents or affected by their family or affected by different things. So I, when I, what I found out was your resiliency mm -hmm. in your situation, because it resonates in your book, because you, you get down to talking about self-sabotage and let's just talk about self-sabotage because even during the pandemic, people were a lot of self-sabotage happened because people mm -hmm. were, it's just a new environment. So as you went through this process, what made you resonate to realize, you know what, I need to clean this up so I don't, I don't do, you know, you know self-sabotage myself any further in life and not blame myself or other people's actions. So let me mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I think the big picture is, is we have our options, right? We can sit in the driver's seat of the car or we can sit in the passenger seat. And every time we get in the passenger seat, the car never goes where we want it to go. I don't know if you know, right? So I must drive the car, step one. Uh, secondly, like I get to pick the desired destination. So my aha moment, when I realized how much control I had, uh, was probably my divorce when all of a sudden I'm sitting in my life and I have nothing, right? I have very little income stream. I have no money in the bank. I have a car that's paid for. I have rent. That's pretty crazy. And I've got a one, three and a five-year-old. Now what? I told myself, well, run those numbers back again real quick. One, three, and five. My kids I mean, so you had five. mid, you had the, you had the Babies. little people. Babies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We started, we started them young and I didn't know who I was. That's kind of where the book really starts, right? Is that I didn't know who I was and I didn't know what I wanted. I did not love myself. I felt a ton of shame. I, you guys, I ran towards society's story as fast as I could, right? The, the suburban home, the, the 2.5 kids, the dull, dark, and handsome man, the, the corporate job. It didn't work. So you went so with I'm, suburban America. What you're saying is you went with the the, the Cinderella, suburban America, mm -hmm. Sleeping Beauty. Everything works out. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> at all. It didn't work at all. <laughs> it was a no. I tried. I tried really hard. I, I my my life looked beautiful. I everything on the inside was screaming, "Get me out!" So I, I ended up losing everything, and that was my wake up call. Was here's my current self. Here's my desired self. What am I going to do to get there? Wow. Who am I going to be? How am I going to show up at? Like, who is this person? And the one thing I decided is I'm never going to quit. Becca, wow. why, 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 why don't you fail? Because I never quit. Have I, have there, have there been a lot of things that have happened that hasn't worked? Yeah. And they continue <laughs> to, and it doesn't matter. You just keep showing up every day. All right. So you went from, and Emma, Mike's going to chime in here in a second here, but you went from sales so kind of your work history and to where you're at now, uh, your, your Mike's just been running through your website, which is amazing. And we'll kept, catch that in, in, in the next uh, section here real quick. But you you went from being a person in sales and office work to I watch your Instagram. I see your, your YouTube and, and you're just talking about self-evaluation on a regular mm -hmm. basis. So how did you how did you get to where you're at today from where you started? Because you said you were in cosmetology, you were in college. Got, <laughs> see, I read the book, yeah. cosmetology. Yeah. Then I went to yeah. college. And my aunt, and my if it wasn't for my grandmother, she who, who just and, and I'm all like, grandmothers are the best. She she resonated with who I am. She you know she gave me that power and and so on. So mm -hmm. I'll shut up. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean you're right. I went from well, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I tried to go to school for human resources. Ended up cosmetology. Then ended up working at a bank. 
uh, in mortgages. And then I ended up wholesaling annuities. That's how I had that territory in Florida. Loved it. But then a new boss came in and tried to tell me what to do. So then I hated it. Right. And so I realized, like, if you give me freedom, I will fly. If you try to touch my wings, get out of the way, right? Like it's a no. It's a I think no. that happens for a lot of us. <laughs> so, now, so what do you do now? So, cause it seems like you work with a lot of people on, mm -hmm. you know, just them overcoming their, their struggles and, and, you know, and it's mm -hmm. men and women. I, and so let me be clear to anybody in my audience, it's, it's men and women, not just women go through after divorce. A lot of men go through a lot of self-evaluation. So how are you helping others now back? Mm. So I have three different ways that I work with people right now. One is a membership for people that are like, I don't know where to start. I want to get my foot wet. Becca seems a little intense. I don't know if I'm yet ready for the transformation that I'm feeling called to. So I just want to like tiptoe into it. So it's almost like my Instagram on steroids. Yes. And then second option is the mastermind only happens twice a year. It's beginning gig again, August 1st to February. And that is a group of us so that you get access to me, whereas in the membership, you don't, you get access to me in the mastermind and we elevate together consistently every single week. It has been like, I was looking at these people Monday night. They don't look anything like what they look like when they started. I'm telling you, they're lighter, they're brighter, they're happier, they're more aligned. The things that have changed in their life are just like out of this world. I have an individual that manifested his dream one that wanted nothing to do with him. Um, got a dream job. I mean, I'm telling you, these people are just creating things and creating an internal world first and their external world is starting to show it. And then the third is VIP with me. That's where you get me one on one. We do weekly calls. You have unlimited text access to me. And I have an individual that just started working with me today. And he said we had two sessions uh, last week and the week before. And his dream car shows up tomorrow. Uh, this woman reached out to what? him on a dating site on Monday that he wasn't even actively participating on that. He has a date Friday or Saturday and it's, it's phenomenal. You guys, it's watching people create, I'm, I'm literally just plucking people, connecting them with their souls and putting them in the driver's seat. That's it. My goal is that you don't need me. You just need to know how to connect with yourself, to know who you are, to know what you want, to know where you want to go and then drive that damn car. That's it. <laughs> So why does so my take is why does social media be is such a harsh treatment? We just had Erica Sutter on here, and she was talking about the impact on social media on women, and and I'll, and Mike can go right after this, and it and she was talking about people self worth is a struggle these days, and I don't know if people when they're talking to you, but people can't find their value because back in the day, like your dad, self value was hard work, get paid. <laughs> And, have, and be able to pay your bills and take care of your family. Mm -hmm. That's not yes. the case anymore in the new uh, the new 21st century. So mm -hmm. what's your thoughts on now that, you know, social media is, is the global thing. It's the new Vogue magazine of, of women or young women uh, mm -hmm. defining themselves. It's and a tool. It, I mean, it is. It's, it's a tool. If we're going to use it. So if, let's say let's pluck social media out of the picture completely. If it wasn't social media, it would be something else and something else and something else. Right. So at the end of the day, it, the tool is irrelevant. It's how we're using it. Maybe it could be different. But the social media or no social media isn't going to solve the problem. It's going inside to say, hey, who am I? Step one, who am I? What do I like? If I could wave my magic wand and create my life any way I want, what would I want? There's so many people that are like removing themselves from the luxury lifestyle that was the desire. And now it's like the freedom of like all these people in like campers and like this better. So 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 there's something like they're like home free, right? Like I, I don't own a home. I have no intentions of owning a home. I just want to lease because every two years I want to pick up and I want the freedom to go somewhere. And I don't know, you guys, people come and change my light bulbs. Like, don't make fun of me, but like, that's a luxury, <laughs> right? Like, I don't even, I don't even have to do that. I don't like, cut I don't grass even have to go either. I don't cut grass <laughs> Right. Like, so the world is changing and the desires are changing. And I think that social media actually can have such an amazing impact to help us like discover desires. So if we're using it as, oh my gosh, this person has this, that feels really good to me. If, if I feel jealous or I feel desire, I feel like, oh my God, I want that. If we're holding it here, we can hold it in our hand. We can have this in our life. So we can use it as 
a window to be able to see what we could create. And we can also use it as an indicator to be like, oh, that didn't feel good. I need to go inside and do some work. I have a question. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, that's a great breakdown. And I was looking at your website. So attract your dream life and mask your energy. Let's break that down right now. What, All right. What do you, so that's awesome. Yeah, because that's kind of catchy. I mean, I was that was deep, but it, <laughs> but it has elements to it. So let's yeah. break it down because you're the mastermind. It does. So ener everything's energy. And when we can understand how to shift energy into what we want, I'll give you a great example. So my ex-husband, he can be a very, very difficult man. And I could tell the story about how difficult he is and how it's really hard to work with him. To master energy, to live my dream life, I tell myself first, before I see evidence of it being true, that he is the most amazing ex-husband, that we have an amazing co-parenting relationship. So what I'm doing in saying that, even if I don't yet believe it, energy is shifting. Mm. And as I continue to tell it, our subconscious mind cannot accept or reject, which means that eventually over the course of time, I'm going to believe that he is, even when I don't yet see that he is. And what happened is he became what I said he was. So the moment we look at what is and we tell the story of what is, we're continuing to propel the same story, which is creating not our dream life, right? So instead, we start to tell the story of what we want to be true. We tell the story of wealth. We tell the story of abundance. We tell the story of love. We tell the story of amazing relationships. And that is the shifting of the mastering of energy. Mm. Imagination is a God-given gift. That's mm -hmm. why we use it. Imagination shifts energy in who we want to be and what we want to create. So I can take your life, your desire, or your current self, your current life. We can look at that and be like, okay, what do you like? What don't you like? Kids, get rid of stuff you don't like desired life. Now, what do we want to create? How does this get to look? Put it here. Okay. Here are the tools that we're going to work with every single day. Just like we go to the gym, right? We lift our weights. The moment we stop, our muscles start to deteriorate. This is the exact same thing. Every single day we show up and we work on telling the story that we most want to be true. There we go. So another question <laughs> that was, well, there we go. That made me understand some things there, Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> you're on point right now so the luxury life blueprint journal mm, yes so Don't i was in costa rica down. yes i was in costa rica uh in november doing a retreat for 12 women and one of the things that came through was hey becca you have all these processes that help you shift your energy so like you look at maybe a situation where you're triggered and you, you write the trigger in, you write, what are you making this mean? And then the question you ask yourself is, is this ultimately true? What we're doing is we're digging deep into perspective and perception, right? And the answer is always no, it's not ultimately true. So then the question is, what would we rather be true? And we shift into that. And so that what would we rather be true is shifting the energy, which is creating what we want. Now we're no longer triggered and we've healed the trigger like that. It's like instant healing. So that's just one of the processes that are in there. But what it does is it takes you through a blueprint of creating your best life by using all of my tools in one place. So somebody can maybe work with me for six months and then take the journal and like go into their life and to continue the process, just like lifting the weight, right? Oh, yeah. So that was requested uh, when we were there in oh. Costa Rica. Like, Becca, why don't you have something where we don't have to like remember all of this? Because it's in your head, which isn't helping anybody else. <laughs> That's right. You got to get it out of your head. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, Beck, you know, you, you shaped the, uh, uh, your, the journey and you shaped the, the tools that you use to get where you're at. And mm -hmm. you, you also are laying down the foundation for a lot of people out there. And, and everybody, her book's on Amazon. You can get on Amazon, get a copy of it. I got one. And, and it's an easy read. It's really a good read. Um, and, it's, and it's actually you know, heart touching because I liked it. And yeah. um, <laughs> Thank but you. as you, but you know you, you were talking about you know retreats and you're talking about people finding themselves. I think the struggle in today's society though is people. And you said something earlier, and, and I was I wanted to wait to get back. And I'm gonna rewind and go back to it. You're talking about you touched on materialistic perspectives, mm -hmm. and and in, in a Western society, and I say Western because you don't find this in most of the uh, third world countries, is that Amer in, the, in the Western society. People are so driven about name brands, labels, and titles, and what they have. 
that they sometimes end up losing sight of who they are. And I'm going to give a great example, and then I'll let you answer or respond. In the military, most of the time when you graduate, I mean, high school, you go into the military, you're given a title. You have that title for 20 years, 15 years, whatever, or 30 years, like I had it for 30 years. But what I found is that with many of my friends, since they've retired and we go play golf or hang out, they struggle with self-identity because they forgot the day they were born. Like I was born Vincent Bugs. So the day I retired, someone goes, well, you're retired general. No, no, I'm Vincent Bugs again. Mm -hmm. I actually, so for me, my transition from the military, taking off my uniform, put my civilian clothes on became when I realized I'm no longer in that body. I'm Vince Bugs again, which means I have to reinvent who reincarnate Vince Bugs because Vince Mm -hmm. Bugs has been on the shelf for 30 years. Mm-hmm. So how, as you're talking to people, how do you make them resonate to understand that, that as they evolve, it's not the title that's so important, but understanding just freaking, because there's a lot of people don't know who they are, Beck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a bigger population than people know. Some people yeah. don't do self-assessment or, and then when they get feedback, so let me ask you a question. So when you're giving feedback and self-assessment, some people get butt hurt. When you say, hey, man, this is what my reality of how I see you and this is what I think you should do. So how, how mm-hmm. do you deal with that dialogue of people having to leave one life where they get laid off and they go, well, that was my the dream job and I can't believe they fired me. Like when the army makes people retire, they go, I can't believe the army let me go. But yeah, they let you go because they had an expiration date. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, and transition and transformation is my absolute favorite thing to work through because it's we're leaving one piece of our life, one season, right? And we're writing a new story. And in this new story, it's blank. You literally have a blank canvas. So it's actually my favorite place to be with somebody is retirement, new job, um, divorce, new marriage, new kids, all the different things that happen in our life, because now you've got this blank slate. I put them in the driver's seat. I get them connected. Now, what do you want? What, how do you want this to go? Do you want this to go well? Uh, or do you want this to do you want this to be hard? Do you want this to be a struggle? So I have an, a client of mine that just got a divorce earlier this year. And six months after, she's like fully rocking it. Six months. <laughs> well, she, six got rid months. Of, she got six rid of her months. problem. Yeah, yeah but, but there's, there's, there's so much less suffering, right? Because we're not hanging on to this old energy. Old past is depression. Future is anxiety. And the only place we can feel good and whole and connected is in the present moment. Right. So, you know, you get you get yourself present, you move into uh, where you currently are and you decide, how do I want this to go? And then the work, right, the work is in. Why don't I think I can have it? Why don't I think this is possible? And that's where Becca comes in, because I can find these limiting beliefs and I can help you shift them, which clears the energy, which brings in the life that you want. You become an energetic match. Okay, so if somebody watches this and they see it on LinkedIn, they'll see it on on YouTube or whatever or on Instagram. Um, How do they reach out to you? How do they book you? How do they get you in if they want to have a conference and have you come in as a guest speaker or or any kind of uh, organization that's saying, you know what, let's let's you know, I saw this on on Coastal Connection and, you know, I want to, you know, I want to get back here and see if if Miss Grabinski can help us out. How do we get how do we get there? All right. Awesome. So on my website, there is places where you can book sessions with me. Um, You can do an individual session. The only way to get in on my VIP is to message me directly. You can do that on the website or through any social media. Um, And I didn't think you were going to answer anyway after I saw your videos and and read some of your stuff. I was like, I sent her a message. I told Mike, I said, I'm going to send her a message, but she most likely won't hear back from her. Oops, my bad. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You know, I actually personally respond to as many messages as I possibly can. Um, It gets insane. Like, it's insane. Um, And I think that personal touch is so important, right? We're here to have connection and we're here to meet people where they're at. And so I love the fact that I'm the one typing on the other side and I'm the one reading the message. And so then there's sometimes you guys where I have to call people out like, those messages, no, these messages are are good. <laughs> it's a little like, clearing like, that needs to happen. I like, I like how you threw you just slid that one in there real quick. <laughs> yeah, like, come on, people, hey, do better. Hey, well, you know, there's some people that just didn't get they weren't they they don't have social media etiquette. 
they missed that. Yeah, class. well, I'm, I'm teaching them. I, I actually did a video. Uh, I've done a couple videos now, actually, where I'm starting to teach. Same thing on TikTok. I'm starting to teach etiquette. Um, this is how you respond, and this is how we show up, and, and this is how we talk and treat people. So I, I do it in a very loving way. <laughs> say it skillfully, <laughs> as we say. <laughs> hey, Mike, before we close out of here, man, what do you got, bro? This has been a very informative, very information. I love the energy level that you said. It's true. If you want the energy, you got to build your energy. You got to put it right here before you, you know, per, you portray it and execute it. Very good. Very good stuff. I appreciate that. Uh, nice Thank meeting you, as well. You know. Yes, you too. <laughs> it makes sense. It all makes sense pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we need the guidance sometimes of, of some person right. like you that's positive and says, hey, I've been there, done that. Come on, I'll show you how to how to get out of it. Mm -hmm. you know? well, and I think at the end of the day, right, society used to be the harder you work, you can get to where you want to go. And I'm just thinking, you guys, let's let this be easy. Let's have fun. Easy and fun. That's where we're going. Hey, so hey, Beck, I appreciate you at the bottom of my heart. Hey, definitely I'll get back with you so I can get your, we got some new shirts going to be coming in in the fall. So I definitely got to get you a new version of the new shirt because they're, 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 they're bad. So we're gonna I would get love that. <laughs> oh, that was nice, but we're going to get the, the new one's going to even be tighter than the ones we already have. So we got you. But hey, Wonderful. once again, thank you for coming on. Thank you. Rock. You. Always, definitely, anytime down the road, if we do we do a, a conference or something, we definitely probably will be asking you to get on the panel and help out. So with that. that being hey, so with that being said, it's me and Mike G always say from Tampa, thank you so much. But we say keep it rolling. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you.